started. There. You're on. Hi right. there. We're here. Welcome. Well, and here's Walter. <laughs> I'm oh here my too. gosh. I'm, I'm it's no Sheila and Walt. You're, are you on the right way too? I okay, am. Good. All we right. look backwards to ourselves, but hopefully <laughs> we look the right way to you guys. Exactly. On this cold, kind of rainy day. 77 degrees and beautiful yesterday. Sun Strange. perfect. 37 degrees when I came home a minute ago and snowing, snowing. and cold and So dreary. we're spitting snow out there. Actually, it's very strange because it's like big clumps of snow going on outside. So I, yeah. wherever you are, I hope you're nice and toasty and that you're now, that's our, just our oven getting ready for those muffins we're going to be doing today. But we're, you know, we're healthy recipes served up on La Bliga. Yes, we are. And um, we're excited. I think this is our eighth one. Can really? you believe that we have done that many months worth of... Yeah. But, um, you know, we started in the other house. We, we did. did I know. You guys have seen more than one house with us. Yeah, this is it, though. 25 <laughs> yeah, years, right? 25 years. We're not That's our commitment. This is it. That's it. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So, here we are, the day before Halloween. It really feels like fall. It's spitting snow. And so, we thought slow cooker recipe would be something fun to do today. And um, also around Halloween, with all the squashes we have... Um, I actually developed the recipe we're going to be doing. This is one of my favorite is chilies. It? I love it. I oh do. Oh my gosh, good. Well, we're going to be talking, we're going to do that the second half because we're, oh. we need to get the muffins in the yeah, oven yes, for the first course. half. So well, we, um, with the, yeah, oh, sorry. so with the, the chili, I thought it'd be fun to share a muffin recipe with you all um, this time. She and makes a really good corn muffin. Oh, you're so nice. Well, I have been perfecting this for a while, um, and why is it? Why did I get into uh, kind of concocting different cornbread recipes? Well, the one in the summertime when we spend a lot of time up in the mountains, we love to do fresh trout. Ooh, and so good. In my family, on both sides of my family, the mm -hmm. rule was if oh. you had whole fish yes. that had bones in it, you had to have some kind of bread. Right. And cornbread was the bread of choice to go with. That is so good, yeah. right? And to yeah. go with trout, it was just perfect. Oh, so good. So, but one of the challenges that we all have with cornbread is that it can be dry. It can be so dry. Flavoring. Or it's that kind of gooey honey it's, stuff. It's really and, sweet. Ooh. And we're just not into that anymore. Not that that doesn't have a fine tradition, but as a regular cornbread, it's just it's too sweet, right. um, too many calories, and um, we uh, think that it doesn't suit all of the kind of recipe choices we have for a meal. So, um, so anyway, so I started concocting different, um, I have a wonderful rosemary cheddar cheese um, cornbread that's fun, that's also on the website. And by the way, to remind you guys, so we have Cynthia, Cynthia's busy um, saying hello to everybody, I hope. Maybe. Yes. Um, so hello everyone, we want to welcome you all um, to our healthy recipes served up on La Bliga. We're gonna be doing this cornbread recipe right now. And um, one of the secrets, so, you know, I say perfect cornbread because one of the things that I discovered is that you can put whole kernel corn into the cornbread and it really makes it uh, delicious and for a couple of reasons. Um, one is one of the things that I'm going to um, add to the recipe that's available on the blog, which is blog.lablegahome.com or you can get to it on our actual website, uh -huh. lablegahome.com. And up at the top it says, Live Vibrant Blog. Exactly, so and you can just click that. there and go to all, you know, find all the recipes and you can look up cornbread and see all the variety of cornbread recipes. But I do whole, whole kernel corn and the thing that I've also developed is that I actually kind of grill it for a minute right. in right. our cast iron. And sometimes I do it as just a cast iron cornbread and mm -hmm. the whole thing, but we're gonna do muffins because muffins to me are a great single serve when you're being mindful about healthy eating because any of the leftovers you can freeze and bring them out as you need them. And so, you really know what you're eating, you know yeah. what the calories are. It's just exactly. It's a great way to be I love muffins. Mindful of your portions. So what we're gonna do right now is we start this recipe. And so again, I call this my perfect cornbread muffin recipe. So that's how you're gonna yeah. find it. Is this it. actually canned whole corn or is that frozen? Okay, so that was another thing. See, I I can't resist changing up recipes. So right. I that that's why you want to watch the Facebook Live because <laughs> that's, that's I'm gonna know, let you gonna know get. what the latest you just, you is with this recipe. recipe. But so one of the things that I love is having things handy, right? So that when you're ready or want to create something, 
you can. And um, so having um, no salt added whole kernel corn in your pantry is a great thing to have because then when you wanna make cornbread, you've got this handy, ready to go, or in the freezer. So we, I have a variety of recipes that use corn, corn salads in the summer, and sometimes I just don't wanna go through the hassle of that fresh corn process of making it ready for the, um, you know, for the salad or whatever I'm doing. So I use um, frozen corn and, you know, we're national strategic partners of um, USDA My Plate. And one of the things they point out in terms of trying to adhere to a budget or that, you know, really things that are, are frozen or canned also can equally have the same, um, you know, quality in terms of the, the vitamins and minerals and um, benefits that any particular food might have. So, so that's one of the things to point out is this is actually frozen corn. So I showed you, this is the kind of canned corn that I got, but this is my frozen corn and it's a three fourths cup of it. And so as I'm putting- Now how do you know that's three quarters cup? Oh, <laughs> well why don't you tell me? Well, I, that looks like a three quarter cup loaf spoon. Oh! It's so handy. Isn't that great? So, so handy. Lisa Marie's on. Hi, Lisa Marie. Hi, welcome. Thanks for coming. So I'm going to turn on. I think you guys can see me over here. But I thought, you know, a little active um, cooking yep, today would be good. So also, I don't know if you all have discovered this wonderful uh, crock. But when you put olive oil in it, it has this tall, a little spout. It gives you just tiny little bits. Instead of a spray, I'm... My problem is the sprays aren't really good for our environment, but this is wonderful. And it's so, a bright spot that actually has that little tiny air um, tube inside, so it yeah. actually reduces the So did you see my tiny little out. bit of swirl? And so I swirled a little bit of olive oil so that um, the corn won't, you know, stick on the bottom of the cast iron. And then I'm just going to um, grill it just a little bit, round it a little bit, just in that flavor in the corn muffin this is my secret. So I am letting you in on the big secret. Yes. So I mean, you were going to give it to me, weren't you? And then you were nice with the gaudies. This kind of thing. Okay. Um, so we're just going to let this grill up while we're doing the rest of it, of the corn muffin recipe. And um, one of the things that I want to point out is, um, you know, corn is, uh, cornmeal is really actually a great source of fiber for us. And it has it does have some really good minerals in it, like niacin, and I want to make sure I remember all the different things that it has in it, because I like sharing that. Oh, zinc, it has zinc in it and, and iron. Of course, I'm one of those gals that um, tends to need a lot more iron. And niacin's one of the B vitamins. Exactly, so it's, it's really, um, it's good for you. I use some flour in mine, of course you don't have to do that. You can um, Just use a different, you know, garbanzo flour, chickpea flour, or a brown rice flour. I mean, there's certainly other alternatives. I tend to use um, the King Arthur. I love King Arthur flour. It's just, it's such a high quality. And then one of the things that I use, I love the stone ground um, yellow cornmeal. And mm -hmm. this is um, hot, hot, Hodgson? Hodgson yeah, Hodgson so of course I love you know the, the classic um, but this one just again the texture of it I'm big on textures as you know and um, are you gonna mm -hmm. roll that for me thank you so um, what we do is a three-fourths cup of the flour three-fourths cup of the cornmeal I've already put the um, flour in here just because I tend to get distracted when I'm talking to you guys so I thought if I pre-did some of this and again I'm using a, a handy Lip spoon here, and um, I spoon in because one of the things I try and be mindful of when we're doing these recipes and baking is um, trying not to, to uh, you know, uh, get the air out because that's kind of one of the things with measuring. So I also use the bottom edge of a knife to to level it off so that I end up with kind of the correct measurement. So I already had um, put in our. Um, baking powder, and I think it's like, it's a teaspoon and a half of that. And the one thing I wanted to point out is in my recipe online, I have um, a cup or three fourths cup and one tablespoon of the flour. Some of these things are a little concocted for me because of the altitude. So I just wanted to point that out to you because we do live in Colorado and we live a little higher up. So um, you don't necessarily have to have that extra tablespoon. It won't hurt anything. But, but it helps with lending for us. It maybe. does. And then um, baking soda is a quarter teaspoon. We have salt and sugar. 
Um, I just put two teaspoons of sugar in. Um, and again, if you're needing to be mindful of that sugar, um, you know, any of the sugar um, substitutes like Truvia is great. Um, can you turn that off, pretty please? Mm -hmm. um, it's great for um, um, baking, especially with just two teaspoons. Sometimes when you use large quantities of uh, alternative sugars, it can change the taste, but that should work really well. And then, um, uh, so I, I just need to stir this up a little bit because, of course, when you have the leavenings, you kind of need to make sure you stir that all in so that um, it's, it doesn't, it you know, gets all throughout the flour because um, sometimes that can really affect the leavening if you don't stir it in before you put the moisture in. So I've got all so you're of this. you missing all the dry ingredients. I am. And of course, I'm, you know, I'm the advocate of um, kosher salt when you put the salt in. So who's, who's in here? Oh, hi. Hello. Um, good to see you guys on this cold, wintry day. So we're going to um, combine, and again, we have buttermilk in this particular recipe Yum. for the, um, the corn, corn bread. I'm just starting to get a touch brown. That's probably just pretty. Just a second more. I think. Yeah, maybe a second more. more. We still have a second more. Yeah. Um, we don't want it to be really hot, though, when we put it in, so you might want to just turn it off now because it'll continue to brown. So um, I also um, am using today... Um, you know, the liquid eggs instead of, um, you know, individual eggs. Again, this is to lower cholesterol. It's just one of those things I, I alternate. You can certainly use, um, you know, whole eggs, but this is a nice way to have something, again, in the refrigerator handy that's also good in terms of if you're needing to be mindful of your cholesterol. So, um, so we got that, and then we're going to do, I say in the recipe to use one um, tablespoon, I think I said tablespoon, um, I mean, just check this particular, yeah, corn oil, one tablespoon corn oil. The reason why I do that is because it enhances the flavor of the corn. If you prefer or don't want to use corn oil, certainly you can substitute the oil that you prefer, like canola oil. Um, but for me, that just really makes, uh, enhances the flavor of the corn. So we got our one tablespoon of oil in there. And we're... Um, now I'm going to mix this up, and then we're going to mix it up inside the uh, flour. So we're adding the, the liquid to the flour mixture. And the corn looks perfect. It just slightly has little brown spots, but light brown spots. Oh, oh my gosh, it's going to make this whole thing taste so delicious, I've got to tell you. So um, one of the things that we wanted to, you know, it's so fun um, having you guys inside our kitchen, especially the day before Halloween, because we have such fun memories of Halloween. When the kids were growing up, we have three wonderful children, and when they were growing up, we would have a pumpkin carving party uh, every year. And the fun part of that was that... And we really had, it was the five of us, but then we would invite all of our friends who basically didn't have kids. They right. were either single or they were childless couples. And it was so fun because everyone would bring their own It was like an knives. excuse for people to be childlike, yes. right? It was so fun. And we'd do it in the basement. We'd do all sorts of tarps you to, over you're, everything. You have to be inside. And so <laughs> we were with all sorts of tarps over everything so that we didn't get messes. I had gone and gotten all sorts of fun um, nice, kitchen knives, right? right, exactly, from from the place downtown in Kansas City, the sharpened knives that I would buy there. They had like ones. extras, right? Right, right. Or you just buy these, there, you know, there, the old for ones. a dollar, they were great And they were funny looking knives, yeah, I remember. Like, yeah, with bony knives, yeah. but they were really sharp and great. And then we would buy all sorts of pumpkins. So we'd have, you know, 15 or 25 pumpkins for maybe 12 or 15 people. But we'd actually there. go to, you know, the, the pumpkin farms. And yeah. we'd and pick out, oh my god, you know, so beautiful fun. pumpkins and perfect pumpkins and very sort of Charlie Gnarly Brown looking pumpkins. pumpkins. And then people could pick the kind of pumpkins. Some people like Charlie Brown pumpkins, you right, know, right. and they could actually design to them, right? You know, so create their. And of course, we had an artsy crew. Oh, and, we did. Yeah, it yeah. was all very much a part of it. But I'll never forget. I had we a dear friend who is actually Sheila's really good college friend right. had not grown up really ever celebrating Halloween. And so the first time she came to our house to carve pumpkins, everyone was very, you know, assiduously looking at their 
pumpkin and carving away, and there were funny masks and there were you know bizarre faces. And when Shaheen finished, she had the most beautiful lantern. It was that so was just gorgeous. architectural, <laughs> architectural design. Right. And it was like she oh, won that list yeah. that year. She it, sure was, did. it was a pumpkin lantern. It wasn't, it wasn't what I expected, but it was fabulous. Hi, Ashley. Welcome. Welcome. Yes. So we've got we've mixed all of the 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 corn fixings except for the the, corn the actual kernels of corn. So we're gonna do that next, and then we're gonna put it in this wonderful. Do you guys see this pan? Do you guys know about USA Pan? They are the best. Oh my gosh, we They're did we discover duty. this at a show? Well, actually? actually, a dear friend. A dear friend. De oh, Denise. Yes, exactly. Oh, Denise is the one that introduced us, and then we and discovered then we all the them. variety of things right. at the show. Well, and then we realized when we went to shows that it was actually at the Chicago Housewares that yeah. they had a wonderful booth near us, and I realized, oh. But they're heavy duty, but they're also coated it's with a, a silicon. silicon. So you can, you can go up to 450 or maybe even 525, but right. I think they say We're going to be doing 425. Exactly. And, and they ask that you not do anything metal in them to scrape. But they, Well, guess what you don't have to do? You don't have to put any oil. Right. And so we don't have to spray these. Incredible. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and the cleanup is yes. so great because then you're not, you know, I'm going to scrub it out and scrape it and... What have you? So we're actually using the USA pan to put these in, and I'm you going to. This. Oh, I need to do this. Yeah. Okay. So we're putting this so one in now. I'm not going to burn you. No, no, don't do that. And um, can you guys see, by the way? So it's just absolutely pretty. Yeah. Yeah, and it smells really oh. good too, you guys. And you know, one of the things, and you could put in um, an herb. I'm not doing that today, but you could certainly put sage in or um, some other herb. You know, like a. Uh, um, uh, depending on whether it's fresh or dry, but like a teaspoon of that if you wanted to into this recipe. Rub but sage. Rub sage. Like Doesn't that sound good? I'm going to be making some banana muffins tomorrow with oh, some yeah. sage. So oh, I ate one of the. It's okay. It's okay. You and Cynthia are eating my bananas. <laughs> you know that's what happens. You know I get all the all perfect. Our bananas. Uh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So, um, anyway. You may buy them, but it's our bananas. I just Hi, Joe. Really, the really ones that were right. But anyway, we're not talking bananas today. No. We're talking cornbread. We're on cornbread and, and um, so, so, Joan Gallus is on. Hi. Welcome, welcome. So fun to have you on board. So, we're going to put these now in, and um, we're going to fill these tins in, and it's going to take about 18 minutes, and in that time, we're going to talk and about... And the oven is at 425. Everything's yes. ready to go. Um, I'm going to put a rack actually in the middle. It's okay, that's always right. better if you do that. I didn't pay attention to that when I, I always, that's, is that like you guys? I always pay attention to that as a point that I'm actually putting the muffins or the bread or whatever in the oven. So, um, we had bagels on Sunday and we toasted the bagels and under we had the boiler the fire, and so yeah. it was very high. That's true. So I, I fill um, these up about two thirds full. They'll rise a little bit. And again, you know, muffins from home are a little different size than the muffins you buy in stores. So um, these are nice sized muffins. And the wonderful thing is you know exactly what's in it, right? Yes. So part of a healthy lifestyle and healthy eating is the fact that we were participating in the creation of our food. And by doing that, we're, we know what we're putting in it. And we can also enhance it with flavors and herbs and things that... Um, and ingredients that are good for us and healthy for us. And right? anticipation is really important for us, for our psyche. And oh, so yeah. And we, everything tastes better, yes, right? Exactly. You know, when we're all participating and making um, making these wonderful things. I'm yep. going to use this for a sec. I have to get all the goodness out before we put it in. I think I'm missing some content here in some of these. I can scrape a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've got this. All right. I've got this. Okay. I've good job. This. Good job. So, other you guys have fun Halloween memories. Do you do you uh, dress up for Halloween? Um, do you still go trick or treating? You know, escort your children or other children, perhaps. So we love Halloween, and we still do. When we first moved to Colorado, though, like, it was we're really, really, we're looking forward to this neighborhood because <laughs> really there are lots of kids around. Yeah. Well, the past we're all in last last house we had. Yes. A good neighborhood that had a mix of kids and adults. But when we moved first to um, Colorado, we moved to a condo. And it was kind of secluded where we were. We were kind of in the inside of, of the development. 
And so I went the first year because I was so used to in Kansas City where we yeah, came from. Thousands of kids. Thousands no, literally. Kids. We were one of those neighborhoods where parents would put their kids in the minivan and bring them to our neighborhood. So we were ready, right? We were oh, ready we really with the pumpkins, we yes. lighted, and with lots of candy. And of course, every year I tried to get healthier and healthier, but people don't want that. <laughs> they want the candy. So anyway, we had hordes of candy in Kansas City. And um, so we come out here and I buy the same amount of candy the first year. And not oh a my single God, not a single, person not a single, not a, of any age. Mm -hmm. I, you know, so it was um, pretty eye-opening. So I learned my lesson and we didn't obviously buy candy then thereafter. I know. Fingers in the kitchen. What can I say? Oh, who's saying what? I want to know. People are giving their memories, yes. I think. Do we have people Carla. dressing up in oh, costume? Yes. Here, well, let's see. And um, here, I'm going to grab this and put it in the oven so we get this going. Sid, can you put on for 18 minutes, for your place? Thank you. So we have Lauren, and we have Carla, and Joan, and Ashley, so and nice Cynthia. And yes, and yes. Cynthia is helping us keep on track here. Um, so we've got the muffins in. They're going to be going for 18 um, minutes. And so what next? So what next? Um, so how about you guys? Do you love slow cookers? I am a real lover of slow cookers, um, especially, I mean, I certainly use it in the summertime too, just because when you're busy, it's so nice having something you can put in first of the day. And in the summertime, actually, it's one of the ways to keep your house cool. And in the winter, it's kind of one of those things where the smells and things like today, Cynthia, first thing in the morning came in, because I, of course, wanted to get this ready. And she came in and said, oh my God, mom, this smells so good. And that's kind of one of the wonderful things about slow cookers, yeah. besides the fact of the convenience of being able to put everything in. But it is really bed. like, you know, it used to be you would be over the stove. You keep and, wanting to get out of the, I don't know why I do that. Yeah, just come um, right here, she's saying. Right you know, here. you'd be in front of the stove and you would, you know, let it just simmer and simmer and, and, and Same cook kind away. of concept, but, but you now, have to worry about the fire, right? Exactly, but now it's in the slow cooker, and exactly. so you know, it won't burn on the bottom, it doesn't scorch, all those things right. really don't happen. So I'm a real lover, and one of the things I wanted to point out, um, hopefully you guys can see this, have you discovered all clad? So again, oh, a dear, dear, dear friend, friend oh, same wait, Denise. The same, the same dear I friend. think it's because she's a really good cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And maybe one of the reasons why we're such good friends is because <laughs> we all love good cooking together. And actually have a wonderful tradition, which we'll talk more about yes. as we get to the holidays in terms of New Year's Eve dinners. But um, she's she's used an all clad for years, and I, you know, I keep discovering. I don't know about you guys. I've been cooking forever, right? And we've been cooking together forever. And but I keep discovering new things, and all clad is one of those things. Right. And actually, our first crock pot. Yes. My mother gave us. Yes, she did. And I like, you know, rolled my <laughs> he eyes. Did. He it's rolled all, his the eyes. The last thing that we ever need is one more Because he thinks, you know, we should stuff. cook everything oh, right. in, just, in a different sort of way. Or but did. In, fact, did. in fact, I fell in love. He did. Good. He did. But then Denise is all clad. Okay, it's and just, the cool thing. Is, what is the coolest thing about well, the so, all clad? So, well, there's several cool things but about the all with, with a crock pot, you really did everything in it. It was crockery and and you couldn't put it on the stove but with an all clad because it's aluminum there's and, an insert and you take it out and you can mm -hmm. sear things on the stove yeah. first which so is what doing, i did today you know, so like because we have lamb shakes you did the other day oh, yeah. or you do a one ground the, the meat shoulder. fabulous for browning yeah. the meat mm -hmm. so today this is actually a meatless recipe and that's kind of one of the fun things because we're trying you know to live healthier we we eat everything we <laughs> You know, that's one of our yes, challenges, we right? We, we love everything. But you Except also, for sea slugs, just saying. I, I cross but, those off my list. But, but Sheila really comes from a tradition of the Peace Corps. Yes, and feeling do. that, you know, you really have to use everything. Yes, and so we do. one of the issues she had with, with Halloween was you have all these wonderful pumpkins. Once once Halloween's over, what do you do with them? Making a pumpkin, pumpkin pie right is kind of counter to what we're trying to do. And so that's why you then developed this great recipe. And it's fun are... to have these for decorations too. And the thing about it is that they are decorations and then they become food. <laughs> so they're, it's multi-purpose. You know that reuse, recycle, repurpose? Yes, that's it. Well, the wonderful thing is to... about Squash Hi, is you can totally do that with um, with um, the Squash. Lauren, we love that you love our live spoons. That's wonderful. Oh, thank you for saying that. Awesome. So I came over. Yes. Delinda. Oh, so Delinda, actually we started out by making um, corn muffins. Sheila has a wonderful recipe for corn muffins, which is we on the blog. We call it the perfect corn bread um, muffin, and you can find it on the blog. And it's um, 
It's uh, www.lovelegahome.com or the blog is actually blog.lovelegahome.com um, um, and it makes it super easy for you to be able to um, actually follow along but what I'm trying to do here and I have to confess that part of our Facebook lives is that Sheila changes up the recipe so unless you um, watch the Facebook live you don't know my super great secrets so the great secret about the cornbread which is actually that's in the recipe is that um, not not the grilling part though I actually grill the corn right. so I put whole kernels of corn and I grill it so that so they're in the oven right now and they're cooking up and we're gonna bring them out and hopefully you can s kind of imagine smelling it through the screen here but then um, with our slow cooker, we started out Halloween's with Julia's um, chili. And yes. so again, our lives, and I think this is probably true for anyone who loves to cook or loves food, um, we have so many memories and traditions, right? right. And so um, with and Julia's- And are passed down. I mean, this is your yes. aunt or actually godmother. But... That's the thing about traditions, right. right? And so Julia's chili was a chili that I ate a lot of um, in my growing up and adult years. And um, Julia was um, my mom's uh, roommate in college. And, that's and right best friend and um, also our families are related um, and godparents and um, then the next generation we're best friends. Um, so Andrew's mom who's a dear friend of ours in the family and Uncle Andrew to all of us. And so here we are with Julia's Chili and I made it forever and ever and ever. But it's got meat in it. Yes. And so as we were exploring other things and because of the time of year, suddenly I had all of these leftover squashes you know, so we have An acorn squash. squash, and this a is little, a actually a, a pie pumpkin. So, and I think these are fun because they're cute for decorations, but then they're really handy. And you can make so many things. Shelby Kennard, have you guys discovered the diabetes, um, the diabetic foodie Hi, yet? Susan. Um, she does, she just posted today one that's, that, that's um, pumpkin and lentil salad. Oh, oh my yeah. God, it looks so good. I'm gonna make this very shortly. But you, there's so many uses for these. So for me- But the pumpkin is also really cool because we got into it on recipes because is it, a, is it that it's for- it's, it's so good for you. But it's in terms of your glycemic index, doesn't yes. it do things in terms yes. of lowering that? Well, it's high so. in fiber, yes. the right kind of you know soluble fiber. The other thing is that it's full of water. So it's one of those things that is very filling. So I think I talked talk to you guys before about volumetrics. Yes. Um, a professor, um, Barbara Rolls, kind of coined the term. And it's the idea that we eat the same volume every day, but if we can replace the volume with things that are high in fiber, high in- Nutrient rich, um, but right. not calorie dense. And you are really, oh, you're yeah. cooking it today. <laughs> you are cooking it today. So <laughs> yes, and so um, there's so many good things about, um, uh, about pumpkin and actually um, the folks that um, did uh, State of Slim and that's, they created um, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, the um, Institute um, at the Anschutz um, Health and Wellness Center, they um, are big proponents of pumpkin because it, it really makes you full and it, um, uh, it stays with you in a way so we have, I have a pumpkin um, muffin recipe from right. them that's made with um, oatmeal and I mean there's just so many good things. There were lots of things we did with pumpkin yeah. with that group. But I okay so here are some good. other really fun squash. So this one, who, who knows this one? I do, I do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little butternut. Yeah, and yeah, cute. It's so cute. Yeah, and the, you know I kind of like the smaller ones. I think they're great for decorations but also for me to hack into this. So um, Walter's going to hack into our pumpkin pie to show you how we um, prepare these. But this, you, you need one of these when Cleaners you hack it into these. Cleaners are serious. You know? Serious. When it comes to squashes. Yeah. So we have our, our butternut squash. And the other thing that's fun corn. about this is for butternut, we, if, we're, if we're actually going to roast it and we're going to do chunks, I always peel it all first or I, I have it and then I peel it. And the thing about butternut squash is it has that funny sort of... Um, it, it, it oozes something that, that slightly maybe is acidic on your skin. It, it's always oh, really? very weird. Yeah, oh, it I actually does weird things to you. But okay. we don't have to do it on this. No, we don't. That's my point. So, um, and then I wanted to do a quiz. Does anybody know what this what is, is actually called? Oven. Someone's asking. Oh, I what is it? What are we asking? What's in the oven? Well, but I said already. That, those so are the cornbread. We yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah the cornbread's yes, in the yes, oven. Yes. So this is a carnival squash. 
And the cool thing is I, I actually asked the grocer yesterday because I was going looking for various different squash for this um, in addition to what I already had to make sure I had fun things for you guys. This, um, this squash is a lot like butternut squash in that it has kind of a, a, a maple syrup. It has kind of a sweet finish to it like yeah. the butternut squash does and nutty. And so I think this is going to be uh, super fun to have in a variety of things, but cool. in the chili as well. So how do I prepare the squash? Well, the, the squash are prepared. You say honey. Honey. So um, when he's around, I grab them because he just whacks into them and has them. And what I do is I put it on, um, I put it on parchment paper because it's just easy. I don't have to deal with oil or anything. Have them. And obviously you have to take the seeds out, right? But with the pumpkins, I actually save the seeds and our pumpkin seeds are um, actually currently in salt water and then we're going to roast them. Do oh, you, no, you guys that. have that tradition? Have you ever done that? We used to do this all the time with all of our millions of pumpkins. Yes, doing that? Yeah, Cynthia's eyes light yes. up because we're gonna, I'm going to roast those for us. And, so, and by and doing really them in salt too. water, it actually absorbs a little bit so that then when you dry them out and roast them, they it has little, just a little, little bit of salt. Yeah. So anyway, so all the pumpkins were um, cut in half and roasted at 354. I did 30 minutes here, but 20 to 30 minutes is plenty. And then and what you I did, did... And you actually did a pumpkin and a butternut squash yes. and an acorn squash. I did. Yeah. I did. Um, and what I did, which is different than what I said in the recipe, because I have to confess all these things to you guys, I ended up just peeling them because I am, I'm a scotch woman. I do actually yeah. have some scotch blood in me. Yeah. But... <laughs> I wanted to have all the meat in it, oh. and I also didn't oh want God. it to be mushy, so I wanted to be able to actually chunk it up, and so that's what I did. So I just took, you know, the peeler, and you just literally really like just this. A it's, a knife. it's a pairing oh, knife. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's very easy. And it's very easy. I don't know if you can see, guys, but yeah. Um, so that's what I did. And this, you know, if you have some extra, I actually used everything I needed. Um, in in this pre preparation. So this can go into that salad I was talking about from the Diabetic Foodie. Oh, yeah. It can also, um, one of the things that we love doing is putting, um, Walt is actually, um, thank you. So our muffins may be ready, so we're gonna look at them. Um, but one of the things we love doing is our squash rub, which is also on the website, and just put that on any squash and, and um, brown it up in the oven and, add, and use it as your starch for any meal. It's delicious. How, how do we think? I think they need another few minutes. Okay, let's do two minutes, Cynthia. Smells good, I will say, but they're not really browned on the top yet, so we'll actually raise them up in the oven, so hopefully they'll brown a little bit. So anyway, so that's what I do is I peel it up. I'm not going to peel it all. Um, so who's for Walter um, whacking into it? Hey, you know, let's let's do away. a big chunk. So what am I doing? So um, do you want to do another? I can do pumpkin? whichever. Yes, yeah, sure. Because I am going to use it in a recipe. So I thought. So my trick. So these are Cutco. It's our wonderful Cutco. And I have to say cleaver. before he whacks my finger off, um, which would be good for Halloween, you know, good effects. But so also um, wash first. I was going to say we always I wash them. Um, first on the outside, just so that when you're, you know, hacking into them, you're not bringing anything dirty into the meat of the um, of the squash. So. And not that I'll do this perfectly, but I do kind of try and see how the stem goes and put it so that just it's so coming you up. it better, right? Well, so so if I yeah. cut it in half, I mean, my goal yeah. is to actually cut it perfectly in half. Okay, so he's gonna. So I then just he, barely start this, yeah, and then, and then, I, then I do. Then a little little bit. Chunk, chunk, yeah. chunk, chunk. So he's actually using his palm of his hand to kind of. Or heel is tactically. Okay, okay, sorry, the heel of his. And you see, I, I missed. I'm not really square, but it's we okay. We forgive him because he's doing this for us, and so we are very grateful. Um, but you know, the that's the one thing um, we but have honestly, that was much bigger easy. pumpkins over there, and you can totally use the big pumpkins too. But this is just really easy. I can handle and manage these so easily for baking. So um, anyway, so and then you can save the seeds just like I mentioned, and you know, uh, bake them you know at 350 for 15, 20 minutes. You want them to turn a little brown on the outside too. And, and then you have a really fun snack, or it's something that you can put on top of your salads. Um, you know, we put we actually put nuts in our oatmeal every morning, and, and, pumpkin, and pumpkins right. are they're good. They're very high in fiber. They're a little chewier than other things. Are, are they for pizza or not? No, no, that's yeah. so no, that's right. I think, and yeah. so, but that's when the hull is taken off. And oh, so, okay. So it's actually the yeah, inner part of the yeah. seed. Mm -hmm. But I think they again have a lot of the same nutrients that the pumpkin itself has. And it's also oh yeah, nutrient. I mean yeah. it's and they're well they're just they're more tender for yes. stomachs, so not everyone can can do that. 
So, um, so what I want to do hi, is hi. Marie. Hi, Marie. Hi. So, what do we have in the? So we're doing the squash. Oh, well, timer's off. Oh, timer's off already, sir. Sorry. Okay, so we'll check again. And I, I'm afraid they're done, and they're just not going to be as brown on top. We don't want to overcook these because the thing about it is you don't want cornbread that's dry. Yep. And so. I think we had a miscommunication, so which I was going to put on the top top. I think they're perfect. They're not quite as brown on the top as we would like, perhaps, but they're, oh, they smell good. So we've got our, um, we've got our cornbread done and it's got that whole kernel corn in it that we grilled up so it's gonna be really delicious. And then with our um, slow cooker recipe, so I made it really easy. So I, I used three different squash and honestly you can use whatever squash you have handy. Um, I think the flavors of the acorn with the butternut and then the pumpkin are just really delicious. I just have to show off the USA okay. pan because, I mean, these are just out of the oven, you can see. And all I do is just barely... Now, normally you have to leave these things alone, and uh, depending yeah. on the, the type of muffin and it is. Do you see how easily that comes out? Yeah, he's it's just, just absolutely with his perfect. fingers. I can't do that. It's just like too... I'm too sensitive. Too hot? <laughs> yes, yeah, too hot. So, um, so I wanted to... Um, say that again, this kind of chili I sort of developed Oops. again out of ease. So um, these are, you can certainly have, um, you know, do your beans yourself and, um, you know, take them from hard and soak them and, and cook them. I am, I am the canned type of gal and I try and get the things that are low in um, or no, no salt added. I couldn't find everything, no salt um, at the grocery store. So what I did was actually, um, um, I drained them mm -hmm. and I washed them to get the salt out. Yeah. So, um, so, and then also, you know, it, it kind of depends on your, you know, if you're going fast, you can just put the whole thing in. Um, and if you're trying to be mindful about things like salt um, and taste, because when you have that liquid in there, it kind of changes the consistency a little bit, but it's still good. I do that all the time. So, um, and again, what's handy? For me, I wanted a variety of beans that have different colors. So I did pinto, and um, I do a whole can. So I, that's my measurement as I do a can. I did the cannellini. I, I, they're so pretty in, um, in a stew or a, you know, in our chili. And then the kidney beans. I happen to have a lot of kidney beans handy this time of year because they're so classic yes. for chili, right? Exactly. And then um, I love stewed tomatoes because again, it's kind of that, you know, sort of savory, deep, um, flavor that a stewed tomato gives you that's great in stews and, and chili. So so I did two cans of that and um, I did brown up um, a whole uh, onion mm -hmm. and two cloves of garlic um, with about a tablespoon of um, oil. Again, you don't have to use all that but for me for the flavor of this and this is this is a very large pot, so the reason why I thought this would be fun for today is number one, it's great because you're using up all of your squash, but it also serves a lot of people. So a lot of times in Halloween, you have a, it's kind of a family gathering. People are coming in and out. You know, they, they're able to eat at different times, and this kind of slow cooker meal can serve many. And um, and it's leftovers. There's it's, it's always better the second day. I swear, yeah, don't you right. think? I mean, I really I think all the flavors, you know, kind of meld together yeah. and this is more along the the spicy side so have you guys discovered jars of pickled jalapeno yet that that are sliced this is one of those things again that i have handy in the refrigerator and so don't tell cynthia because she doesn't like spicy food <laughs> but um i put a tablespoon of chopped up jalapeno in there just so a good. tablespoon it really is and good. um and then the other thing i wanted to talk about is um our cumin and chili powder. So there are so many different chili powders out there now and they're in varying degrees of heat. And so that's kind of one of those things that the fresher they are, the better they are, but they also tend to Beef. have a little more heat. Yeah. Um, and then where they're from, it's just like cinnamon. It's just amazing how many different kinds of cinnamon there are. And they really and the do quality. impact right. the flavor mm -hmm. of it. So um, last time I used uh, um, a Chipotle chili, way too hot for this family. So I went back to the sort of the classic chili powder and I have two tablespoons of that in, in the chili. And again, when you're dealing with squash and you're dealing with beans, they tend to, to absorb. kind of, they absorb and they, but they also kind of nullify a lot mm -hmm. of heat, you know, they, right. 
they um, so they can can take two tablespoons yes. of, of that. And that I'm a cumin lover. It's so, so good for us. And again, it's one of those things that the it's it's kind of a warm, savory kind of flavor. It's kind of earthy and, and earthy, but, but really, but solid. I mean, yeah, it is. It. So I just yeah. oh my god, I just love smelling it. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it's so good. So um, so let's see. Is that is that my no, the recipes over here? So I just wanted to make sure that I kind of covered it. And then because I did vegetarian, so there's no meat in this. It's just beans and squash. I used as my liquid a vegetable broth. It does again. If that's not an issue for you and you want to do chicken broth, that's fine. But for me, sometimes as we were saying, we just love having vegetarian meals. Right. And it's it's great because when you do have friends over, this is a meaty meal with the squash and the beans. This is a hearty meal. What are you laughing at? Me? No, Cynthia says I'm here. I, I am can right I here can hear you all know, this. I can hear you. <laughs> She, yeah, she can definitely, she's just right here, you know. Plus the fact yeah. that I am watching the She's sort of our, live. Uh, yes, our, our IT tech person. She's our IT tech over there in the corner, uh, actively participating, of yes. course. So, um, so anyway, so this has been cooking for six hours, and... Um, it has one hour to go, or is that... No, no, it's, that's, it's been warm. Okay. So it's actually, so I think we're, we're ready to... It looks really um, good. I it, snuck it's fun right. being up here. Uh, it's fun being up here instead of having to watch the dogs on, on, on my side uh, usually. Okay, thank you for that. That's very kind of you. <laughs> uh, no, so, I like being able to watch you guys. I'm so glad. Okay, so we, this is, a, I might as well just use it. So um, the recipe calls for um, a um, cup and a half. And we're using, you know, we always highlight one of our, our dinnerware sets. And so this time we're highlighting our vivente. And the vente is supposed to, okay, so sit back, relax, and even though you're watching the snow outside, imagine being in a vineyard on a Tuscan hillside Tuscan with the breeze hillside. blowing in the soft uh, light, um, sipping perhaps a little glass of wine. And tendrils and, of the, of the uh, grape vines yes. growing up the So that's the what herbs. you're supposed to imagine yes. with this. And, um, and if you remember, we always have these measurements, so... Uh, Cup and a cup and a half. So, for that cup and a half of um, of our chili, we can just fill it right up to there, and no, then we're gonna have um, we're gonna end up with a simple salad. So to make this a meal, we have our wonderful um, perfect cornbread muffin, and then we're gonna have a simple salad with my homemade vinaigrette, and then the cup and a half of the chili, and we're gonna um, perfect serve Sounds it up. Good to me. Um, and um, one of the things I wanted to mention too is we're we always have some condiments. That's again one of the traditions, and we again have focused on how to make those a little healthier. And so, if you guys wouldn't mind bringing these over, sure. I'm going to bring this over, and then you guys can talk about that. So, two, um, so cheddar uh, cheese is wonderful on this kind of chili, and you can get the two percent, you know, milk uh, cheddar. So that's great, and um, and again, you know, like uh, serve it up with that max a tablespoon of each of these things if you want. You can have as much as you want of the green onion. So green onion just kind of is again, it's a beautiful topper. And it's flavorful mm -hmm. and, and, and texture wise it's really good. And then, and then oyster crackers are always sort of, I certainly had oyster crackers yeah, with my chili always. Exactly. So we have oyster crackers. And then one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is classically a lot of people use sour cream. And so I got a, a sour cream and I um, was amazed. So two tablespoons of sour cream are 80, that says 80 calories. So I got Chobani, which is one of the um, non-fat Greek yogurts. I think Greek yogurt, because Greek yogurt is so like sour cream, that I got um, the Greek yogurt and it's 20 calories for two tablespoons. So 20 can 80, be 80? 20. Um, and it is it is so good. And so we really don't ever use sour cream. There are moments like New Year's Day that we may do it. But even I think last year I used sour yeah, right. cream. We really got into the Greek yogurt. We really have. Yeah. We replaced it. So, so, back so in he's the fridge. back in the fridge it goes. And I got, you saw I got a little tiny container because now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with it. But, um, but it was all good for the cause to show yes. you guys. Because I just am, I'm always amazed by these things. Mm -hmm. And particularly, because I'm not willing to sacrifice taste and yumminess um, and kind of the experience, thank you, mm -hmm. of what we're offering. Um, and that's why something like the Giovanni is so good. And of course it comes in flavors and things, so if you want it to but eat this otherwise. Is just but plain. this is just plain. 
non-fat or low fat or it's non-fat this is yeah. non-fat and but it's greek yogurt so it just okay. looks so yummy it looks exactly like sour cream yeah. Come on, don't throw it away just put it over there if you wouldn't mind okay so we've got these ready to go i wanted to put my finger in there did you see but i stopped mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. because even though i'm alone in the kitchen yeah it's not up. so we're gonna um serve this up and so i can show you what this looks like so oh it just looks so pretty with the it different really colors does. and uh, and I actually put um, red pepper in here as well. And actually, it turned out it was an orange um, pepper because they oh, were sweet completely pepper. out yeah. of, you know, again, I'm very adaptable. <laughs> Even though I'm doing this Facebook Live and I'm supposed to be perfect and yeah. have all these things, whatever's at the grocery well, store is what you guys get. Yeah, so, a, but um, perfect means adaptable and right. flexible. So here we go. Um, oh, oh you know, I, I want you guys to see the variety of things. So I'm going to try and put... Um, so make sure you can see all the different things. You want to do your display thing? Is sure. it too hot for you? No, no, it's fine. And then you can put the um, condiments on that you want. Yeah. Where's the so you guys can see maybe there. Um, so there, the, you can see the cannelloni beans and the and the pinto or the kidney beans and and little pinto, right? Also. So it's it's pinto. Yeah. Kidney, so pinto, and kidney, and cannellini. And, cannellini. Mm -hmm. and then the various squashes that you really can't tell the difference whether it's squash or, or pumpkin at this point. But oh, right. it looks so good. But um, by topping it up like I did, sometimes they can get really mushy. And so although they are, you know, they're very, it's all melded in there. Uh, it's, not, it's nice to have, you know, kind of the, the, the different um, texture of, um, and the, you know, the And then I'll uh, put, add things. just a little bit of cheese on top. Does it look good to you guys? Are you salivating, I hope? See a little cheese, so it melts in first. And then I'll add some green onions because they're so flavorful and good and attractive as a condiment. And then I'll add just a little bit. You didn't of, start with, you're topping it with the I'm with finishing the that up, yeah. See, and you can do your own style. That's right. the good thing about this. Sheila and I may have a and different say, order this, for our topping. This this um, cup and a half, and some people can't obviously eat a cup and a half, um, and they you know serve up what's the Doesn't that look great? Look at that. But it is so filling oh, and, and meaty. And the thing about it is it's vegetarian. It's got just beans and the squash in it. And you can use any squash you happen to have um, handy from your, um, your fall decorations. And, and, you know, it's something, the wonderful thing about squash is you don't even have to refrigerate it. And it lasts right. forever. I mean, it's one of those things that and you can have it now can. and not feel like you have to get rid of it. You can just keep using it in the variety of yeah. um, recipes that use right. squash. From you know, I'm going to be using the pumpkin for I'm I'm doing I'm developing a cranberry pumpkin muffin Yum, recipe that, that hopefully good. I'll be sharing with you guys soon. And yeah. and then I talked about right? that salad that is you know squash and and lentils, which yeah. is so good. So I mean, there are just so many things that you can use. So we're going to try pumpkin, right? Pumpkin. What did I say? Squash. Well, yeah. Well, well, pumpkin is a squash, well, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So um, we're going to try this with a muffin. You need to break the muffin open so they can see. Oh, are you ready? Let's see. Can you? Oh, we're going to have to come up really close. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good. But can you see? The whole oh. kernels in there. Yum. So have you ever had a muff, a corn muffin with um, whole kernels of corn in it that have been grilled? So um, it's good. And of course, some of us are going to put a little tiny bit of butter <laughs> on our muffin, cause just cause. Well, it's cold and it's rainy out there, right? And it's only a little bit. See, look. So we're going to put a little bit of that on there, and both of us. Yeah. Since you're going to have a bite too. Are you ready? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm you're sharing, right? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Just testing. Daddy's bite? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he, he actually didn't do a daddy bite. Mm, it's really good. I stopped. Mm -hmm. Funky? Mm hmm. Mm. Taste that corn. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, that's yours. Stop. Yum. It's great. Good. Yeah, totally. I'm joking. Oh, I'll do that. I'm not that talking with my mouth full. I'm good. I know okay. you're. I know you're talking to the dad, but don't choke. And don't. It may be hot. I know it. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I can't wait. Okay. 
So right. we're just letting you know that it really is good. Yeah. And um, again, if you have any questions, you know, please ask. Yeah. I hope you guys can enjoy this and uh, try it out yourself in your own home. Walter's trying it now. Yes. Okay. That was wonderful. Mm. So, and it's not hot, is mm. it? But it has a warmth to it from the jalapeno and the, the chili right. powder, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and again, that's something you can totally adjust yep, to yourself. Great. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, but you want things to be flavorful so you enjoy them and so that they're satisfying. And um, you want them with all these wonderful healthy ingredients to keep us healthy and boost our immune system. That's another thing that pumpkin does for us. Um, this time of year, you know, we need to be mindful and eat healthy. Um, Walt and I have been traveling and we kind of came back with a little bit of the sniffles. Yes. Um, and, but we're, we're carrying on. But, you know, we, these kinds of meals do, you know, help us carry on because they're, they're, they're good keeping us. us healthy and That's they're right. giving us the nutrients we need to fight off these, these nasty cold bugs. Yeah. So we hope you guys have a super fun Halloween and that um, now you have a good recipe for the friends and family who might be coming over or any time during the, the, the fall and winter where you're um, looking for a hearty, good, but very healthy meal. Yes. And um, we're going to see you next month. And when is it next month? Next month, we're, these past couple of months have been in a different time because we have these holidays that are coming up. And so because of Thanksgiving coming we're up. We're going to be on the fifth Tuesday. Or is it the, the fifth? Fourth, yes. um, so and the date is November 27th. So November 5.30 30 still. 5 still 30 a Tuesday. Mountain time. Absolutely. But we'll be off daylight savings time at that point. In fact, this weekend we change. <gasps> No. Daylight savings time. Uh, I always love fall back though, right? Because mm -hmm. we get that extra hour. So this is very yeah. yummy. That extra hour of sleeping or whatever we want to do, with the, you know, uh, to make mo the most of that hour. Um, skiing. Some people around here, that's mm -hmm. that's what they love. Um, so anyway, I wanted to mention that it's going to be about holiday baking. So hopefully you guys will be able to share some of your stories about holiday baking and um, some of your health, healthy holiday baking tips and um, kind of what you share this time of year as some of the traditions in Rob your just family. Came on. He said he's dying to Rob Portinga. So oh, he's good. Well, this check out love. Rob. I yeah. know. He's a baker. Uh, Rob is a baker. So um, yeah, love the, the competition's on, yes. Rob. I can't wait to hear if you like our, our uh, perfect cornbread muffins. And the stew. Yes. So um, take care. And uh, again, here's to you. Uh, here's to having healthy recipes and uh, hopefully you're enjoying them served up on the Glicka. Yeah. So great. All right. Have Thank a good you evening. guys. Good to see Take everyone. Care. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next month. Bye bye.